Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God Compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish, and chicken, pounded yam with ikusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup, and so much more. Call us 752 3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. Greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome to Gateway to Life. I am Bridget Ugbefon and I am so very excited to be here again. Whatever time of the day you may be watching or hearing the sound of my voice is such an, an is such a pleasant thing to be able to bring the word of God to you at this time. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day that you have made, for this awesome moment that you have allowed us to be partakers in. Father, I say accept my thanks and praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Awesome God, even as I yield myself to you today to be used to convey your word to this beautiful souls that may be hearing the sound of my voice or watching me on, on television or whatsoever device they may be watching on. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you will speak your word to their heart through my lips as I give you, O oh God, the way, as I give you, O oh God, the permission, Lord, to use my lips to convey your message to these souls today, I pray it will reach them, making meaning to their spirit men in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father and my God, I pray, O oh God, that your word will not fall to the ground unfulfilled, that your word will not fall to the ground without making an impact on these souls that are watching or that are listening in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the vessel that you are using Tobago Inspirational Network and all that are affiliated to it. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to move them from height to height in the mighty name of Jesus. That at the end of the day, all the glory will be yours and the devil will be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I am confident that you have heard me because I prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Again, you are welcome to Gateway to Life. And so today, by the grace of God, we will be wrapping up the series that we started titled Our Weapons of Warfare. And by the grace of God, our main text has been Matthew chapter 6. We, we, we took it from verse 1 through 13. And by the grace of God, we have been you know, through the help of the Spirit of God, exploring these scriptures. Um, that is Matthew chapter 6 from verse 5 through 13, and the Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 4. And just to paraphrase, Second Corinthians chapter 3, 10 from verse 3 to 4, talking about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, he says, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, paraphrasing. And Matthew chapter 6 from verse 5, paraphrasing, our Lord Jesus Christ was giving us, you know, a template, teaching us how to pray. And he came and started breaking it down, telling us, you know, when you pray, this is what you should do. And he told us when you pray, you don't pray like the hypocrites do. They pray on the corners of the streets. They pray in open places so that men will see them. 
you know, and, and, and marvel, you know, at, you know, their strength to be able to pray. And our Lord Jesus Christ said, when you pray, you go in your closet, you shut the door. When you shut the door, he said, then you start to pray thus. And he began to tell us step by step what we should pray about. And we have gone through that by the Spirit of God. And uh, we are right now on the subject matter of forgiveness. And our Lord Jesus Christ said, he said we must pray and say, forgive us our debt as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know, you will see these words, you know, used in different forms, in different versions. But what the nutshell of that word is, you must be willing to forgive in the place of prayer. For your prayer to ascend unto God in an acceptable manner, you must be able to forgive. And by the grace of God, in the last um, um, episode that we had, we talked about, you know, the steps we need to take in ensuring that we live this life of forgiveness and i just want to quickly wrap up that point and then we will go to the last verse hallelujah and so we are still talking about forgiveness and i remember telling us the last time forgiveness is not what you do to please the person you are forgiving or the person who quote and unquote offended you is something you do for yourself apart from the fact that it is a command the Bible says that you can forgive those who trespass against you and I remembered reading the scriptures from Matthew chapter 5 and from verse 23 to 24 last time Matthew chapter 5 23 to 24 it made us to understand that even when you come to the altar to offer your sacrifice and you remember that your brother had ought your brother is offended because of what you did your brother have unforgiveness against you bible says that if you put that gift on the altar you should go to that your brother and make amendment make your ways right and then come back to give your offering in other words i remember telling us that unforgiveness can hinder your offerings from being accepted to God or can make your prayers your offerings your worship unacceptable before God because if it were not so God would not say go and make ways right with your brother before you come back to give your offering and so today we are we are taking it off from there and I say all forgiveness we give room to the devil to manifest in your life the Bible says that when you pray you pray to us you say, forgive us our sins, even as we forgive those who sin against us. So if you do not do this and you come to the place of prayer, all forgiveness will give room to the devil to manifest in your life. It's like giving the devil a pass, giving the devil, you know, the ticket into the zone of your life, giving him the passport into the zone of your life unforgiveness will make the devil you know it, it will make him have the right to access your life at will because unforgiveness like i said the last time will shut certain doors in your life unless you open up unless you let go there are certain things that the devil will keep holding on to just because of that act of unforgiveness let's see what the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 and from verse 26 to 27, talking about the fact that unfor unforgiveness will give room to the devil to manifest in your life. Look at what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. It says, be ye angry and sin not. In other words, there's a great possibility. Don't forget the scriptures we would have read, you know, when, when the question was posed that Jesus, how many times do I forgive my, my, my brother when they offend me? Is it seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times. He says, but 70 times seven times. Matthew 18 verse 21, you know, through, through 35 that we read, you know. And the Bible is making it clear here. It says, get angry. People will offend you. Offenses will come. God himself knows that there will be difficult people. There will be 
planted in the path of your life, in your path of life, at some point in time or the other. He it says it's okay to get angry. But he said in that anger, do not sin. You remember that in the weeks past, past, I've told you, people will offend you. People will do things that really hurt you. I am sure if I had the opportunity to entertain uh, some of you to tell me, you know, the hurt that you have been in life. I, as a human being, may almost tell you now, nah, you don't forgive this particular person. Because they would have done some, some deep things that you find hard as a human being to let go. The Bible says it's okay to get hurt. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be offended. He says, but do not sin. At what point does the offense metamorphose into a sin? That is where you should be interested in. That takes us back to the point that I would have raised sometimes, you know, so, uh, some, somewhere along the line where I was, you know, treating um, this issue of unforgiveness in the last um, weeks. It is okay for you to be offended. It is okay for you to even remember and not. It is okay to seem not to be able to forget what the person has done to you. But remember, I told you that even when you remember, even when you don't forget, you remember this person did such and such to me. It does not bring that hurt anymore. It does not bring anger. It does not bring that, you know, you know, bitterness. It does not bring that, you know, a, a, a unrighteous indignation anymore. Because forgiveness would have taken root. So let's get back to the scriptures. It says, be ye angry. People could offend you and make you angry. It says, see not. It says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, it's telling us that one of the ways that we can actually tackle this unforgiveness, don't let it linger on. I have a particular trait Although it has gotten me into trouble so many times, but I still choose to go by it. I have this trait of going to tell people to their faces. When they offend me, I go, I don't let it slide. I go straight and tell them, you did this, this, and this, X, Y, and Z, and I do not like that. Like I said, it may have gotten me into trouble so many times because of my, my immaturity and how, I, you know, you just want to give it to them the way it is. Just, I don't want to pretend. I want you to know it right now and now and just the way I feel. But you see, with time, when you mature, even when you approach them, you will have a way of passing the message across in love. With time and maturity, you will be able to speak with people about the way they would have offended you in love without making things worse. The Bible says that a soft word, I'm paraphrasing, a soft word will turn away wrath. Amen. So the Bible says, do not let the sun go down upon your own. If you have to go my way, like I just said, approaching the person and letting them know this is what you did, this is what you did. There are some offenses that you really need to get in touch with the person and say, you know, you did this and this and this to me, but I forgive you. And there are some that you really need to hear from God to go to such person because that may lead to another disaster. You know, I give example to, to, to people. You, you prob probably, God forbid, it involves taking a life. You took somebody's life and now you are in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, okay, that uh, you should confess your sin. And then you approach the person. You don't know the state of mind of that person at that time. The person may not be able to handle that. So that is why I said you must be sure that God is leading you to go to that person. And if God is leading you, trust me, he will give you the right words to speak that the person in turn will truly forgive you. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is that the word of God says it's okay to be angry. It's not a sin to be angry. That is what I tell people. It's not a sin to be offended. It's not a sin to be hurt by somebody. What you do with that feeling is what will determine if it moves from the zone of just an offense into a sin or just, uh, just, just being angry into a sin. What you do with the feelings you get from what that person does to you is what will determine if you end up 
sinning. So the Bible says that you should not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Now this brings me to the exact point I just raised. That unforgiveness will give room to the devil to manifest in your life. So when you allow unforgiveness fester, when you allow that anger, that bitterness, that hatred, you know, that, 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 that desire to carry out a revenge, when you allow it eat you up, the Bible says that the devil could possibly take a place in your life and you don't want that to happen so wrapping up on that unforgiveness has nothing good to do to you it has all the bad things to bring you away unforgiveness slows you down on every side i mentioned that before but just for emphasis it will slow you down on every side it will make you miss out on a lot of things. There are people, just because of the issue of unforgiveness, their destiny help us. They cannot approach them because they are toting them in their minds in unforgiveness. Let it go, my dear brothers and sisters. Release them and let it go. I don't know who offended you. I don't know who you are holding in your heart. It may be somebody who jilted you. It may be a spouse who walked out on you. It may be anybody. Just let it go. Hallelujah. Unforgiveness will make you bitter all the time. It will put bitterness inside of you. And let's quickly look at that last scriptures in unforgiveness and we'll move on. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 12. Talking about unforgiveness will keep you in perpetual bitterness. And look at what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 12 and from verse, from verse 3. Hallelujah to God. Look at it. It says, therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation and in that day shall ye say praise the lord call upon his name declare his doings among the people make mention that his name is exalted hallelujah if you read further down it talks about all the things that a joyful heart will exude and all these things will be stolen from you if you allow unforgiveness take root because bitterness will take the place of joy and without joy you cannot draw water out of the wells of salvation without joy in verse 5 you cannot sing unto the lord because of the excellent things that he has done unforgiveness will make you suppress the goodness of god in your life will make you look away from the good things that God has done and you begin to focus on the bitterness, on the hurt, on the pain that the person would have caused you. That is what unforgiveness will do to you. Hallelujah. You don't want to let that go. So leave it to God. Let it go. Don't forget the Bible says vengeance is mine. That is what God says. Vengeance is mine. Leave it to God and let it go. And so we move quickly to verse 13 of Matthew chapter 6 verse 13 looking at the lost prayer now we have just said and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors verse 13 says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is thy, the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen it says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen so the lord jesus is telling us that when you pray you have to ask god lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil in other words you are asking god to lead you in his way to lead you in his path to take you away from things that will swallow you up in the wrong direction. You are telling God, help me to walk in the path that you have marked for me. Take me away from things that will make me derail from your original plans for me. Why do you have to do this? Because on your own, you cannot do it. 
the Bible says, and I paraphrase, it says, a great door, an effectual door has been opened unto us. It says, but many are the adversaries. So in other words, even though God has his, his, his plan marked out for you, even though he has his doors open unto you, there are so many distractions. There are so many adversaries. There are so many things that want to stop you from accessing that door. There are so many things that want to stop you from walking through that door of victory. And so the need arises for you to be able to go to God and say, Lord, lead me not into temptation. God himself does not lead us into temptation. God himself does not make us go through what we cannot bear. But what you are simply saying, what is what you are saying, one of the ways you could look at it is, God, help me so that the enemy will not succeed in distracting me from my place of blessing. Hallelujah. You are telling God to lead you in his way. Let's quickly see what the Bible says in Psalm 5 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Let's see what the Bible says in Psalm 5 and verse 8. Lead me not into temptation, you know, in the place of prayer. Look at what it says in Psalm 5. Glory to God. Our God is an awesome God. When you call him, he answers. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says when you call him in the place of prayer, he answers. Look at what it says in verse 8 of Psalm 5. It says, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Do you understand what we just read? Make thy way straight before my face. That's what I was trying to say. That even though God has mapped out the way, even though God has made the door open, there will be distractions on every side. Distractions that life will throw at you. Distractions at what situations and circumstances that you will experience in life will throw at you. But your prayer, that prayer saying, lead me not into temptation. You are saying, Lord, lead me in your righteousness. Lead me in your path. Help me. To walk through the way that you have prepared for me. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You may have been called into ministry. And because you have calculated with human eyes. Because you have put two and two together. You say, no, ministry is not for me. I cannot make it. I don't think I can. What if nobody listens to me? What if nobody wants to hear me? Lead me not into temptation. Help me to walk in your path. Help me to walk in the path of righteousness because of my enemies. Your enemies do not want you to excel. They do not want you to be right in the will of God. So they will do everything to pull you back. They will do everything. They will throw all kinds of things at you just to make you turn around and go back. But you want to say, God help me, I need you. The same thing in, 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 in Psalm 27 and verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. He said, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. So sometimes you are saying, God, why would, why would I say, Lord, lead me not into temptation? God does not lead into temptation. I'm trying to interpret to you what that scripture is saying. Is actually saying, God, help me so that my enemies will not excel, so that they will not succeed in derailing me. Hallelujah. You are saying, God, teach me your way. You could go, we could go on and on and on. Look at Psalm 25 from verse 4 to 5. You are saying, God, teach me your way. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in the truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Lead me not into temptation. God will not tempt us with sin. It is not in his nature to do that. He will not tempt you with sin. He knows our frailties. He knows what we can bear. He will not tempt us with sin. God may allow the devourer come our way. Like in the typical example of Job. Job, when the devil came, God allowed the devil to do all kinds of things to Job. Even though he gave him a boundary. Say, you can do any other thing, but you cannot touch his life. 
So God himself does not tempt us. Let's quickly see what the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 13, telling us that God will not tempt us with things that we cannot bear. He, will, he himself, he, he does not tempt. It's just like you as a parent, you know the things that your children cannot handle. It will take an irresponsible parent to throw such at their children. To make them go through things that they cannot handle. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So God himself does not tempt us. But he may allow the evil one tempt us. But even in that place of temptation, <laughs> even in the middle, in the midst of the temptation, the Bible made us to understand that he will even make a way of escape in the middle of that temptation. Even when the enemy begins to bring things that he knows that the, are your weak point, the Bible says in the midst of it, God will make a way of escape. But the question, do you listen to him? Do you follow his commands even when he's trying to bring you out of that temptation? God cannot tempt us because he wants us to be holy even as he's holy. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16 tells us that God wants us to be holy as he's holy. So he cannot contradict himself. God who wants us to be holy cannot tempt us with things that he knows will swallow us up in sin. So praying this way is telling God, I want you to help me remain in your path. I cannot get over it myself. Help me, Lord. That is what Matthew chapter 5, uh, Matthew chapter 6, I beg your pardon, and verse 13 is saying, lead us not into temptation. God, help me to walk in your path. You are telling God, do not allow the tempter have a hold over me. Temptation could come in diverse form. It could be trial. It could be whatsoever way. But what you are saying, God, lead me not into temptation. Do not let the devil hold get a hold of me do not let the devil triumph over me do not let the devil succeed in stealing my joy in stealing my blessings because you are able to deliver me you know what i can bear first corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 tells us that god knows what we can bear he knows what we can handle he knows what we can take so in the way as much as the devil tries to lead us in this temptation god will always raise up our head in the midst of it so when you pray Always go to God to tell him, I know you love me. I know you've opened doors for me. I know you have made a way for me where there seemed to be no way. I know you are able to give me the things that I ask. I know you see my tears. I know you see my pain. I know you know my struggles. I know you see my shame. I know you see the things that I desire that I cannot lay my hands on just as yet. But Lord, in the process of you taking me to my place, to accessing all these things, Lead me not into temptation. Do not allow the enemy prevail over me. And so, dear friends, brothers and sisters, I will stop at this point today. I want you to know that God is a God that answers prayer. It doesn't matter how endless it seems, how bad it looks like you have been praying, and it seems like you are not even praying. Do not give up. Keep praying. The Bible says keep doing the good that you do. It says that in due season you will reap your fruit if you faint not. And until I come back next time, shalom. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish and chicken, pounded yam with igusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup, and so much more. Call us 752-3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. 
I am Pastor Bridget Ogbeifun, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.